Good afternoon, everybody. Hello. Okay, so I, um, hi everyone. I thought we could start so you could tell us, we were talking about this the other day when we chatted, but you were so kind as to give me kind of an explanation of what IS and E is separate from Illich and how it all kind of relates together. So if you could like school the audience on uh, that, that would be great. Absolutely. So. I think everyone's pretty much familiar with the Detroit Tigers and the Red Wings and 313 Presents. So uh, Illich Sports Entertainment, which acronym is ISNE, is part of 11 companies that the Illich family owns and operates. And we're the sports entertainment arm of our businesses, which <clears throat> I'm, I'm the leader of our uh, partnership business and we get to touch all of our businesses. So we have about 190 partners. We manage over 300 contracts and a lot of our partners touch a lot of our different businesses as well as our teams. So try to simplify, in a simplify way, we're in the sports entertainment business, but we're part of a much, much bigger and broader business, really led by our pizza business, which is Little Caesars Pizza, of course. And then tell us a little bit about what your role is specifically and how you kind of came to that feel free to share your background whatever you think yeah daniel it depends on what time of the day you ask me that question <laughs> what my role is um so our 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 work is about connecting our partners um brands with people with consumers through through sport and anybody that's in the sports entertainment business is reading today sports matter people show up for sports they're front and center they are paying attention and folks that buy marketing and responsible for driving business for companies realize that. And our job is to connect. I, Casey talked about it earlier today. We are in the connection business and we're always looking for better ways, more efficient ways, more powerful ways, more meaningful ways to connect uh, brands to our, to our fans, to our visitors, uh, and, and make it a meaningful moment. So, you know, one of the things we're gonna talk about today is some of the new technologies that we think are gonna be really important. And it's just the beginning, there's more to come and it'll get faster, um, but we're, we're in the connection business. So as we've alluded to, you guys did make this huge announcement recently. And um, for those who haven't heard about it yet, I heard you have a fun kind of slideshow to take us through the evolution that's gotten us to today yeah i'm the guy who in our group says no more decks can't do decks and then i show up here and i yeah i gotta have a deck so my staff is sitting over there my, my teammates and they are responsible for putting this together so um yeah we 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 want to talk about some technology but this is just one one example so <clears throat> um hockey is coming uh is starting the season next weekend uh, here in Detroit, the Red Wings are playing the Montreal Canadiens next Friday, and there'll be some new, uh, there'll be a very new asset that's really exciting that's been worked on for the last six years that we're going to, that will be unveiled. The National Hockey League built the asset. This is just the beginning because this, some of this technology has been around and part of other sports like, um, like fo European football, um, but it will also be brought to baseball in time and foot, American football in time and basketball as well. So um, we're gonna talk a little, little bit about that and show a couple slides. So do we have some of the supporting deck? Yeah, so RED, so really the acronym is DED, it's Dedicated Enhanced Dasher Boards. So Dasher Boards, everybody knows what a Dasher Board is, right? Everybody knows hockey fans, Dasher Boards, okay. So Dasher Boards have been somewhat of the jewel asset of hockey for advertising. And they've been around for over 40 years. The first Dasher board actually was launched in Minnesota uh, in, I believe, 1980. So prior to that, you'd, you'd, you'd look at uh, a game and it would just be pretty much the players on ice and, and no advertising. That changed in, in early 80s. And it's really been, that's what it's been all the way up until this past season and until now, really. So go to the next slide. I think we're going to show a couple of things here. Um, you know, we want you to, there's reasons why, and we'll support all that. But I think when you see the digital technology that's involved here is really the game changer, and it's gonna really lead to many, many more things. Next slide, please. So, you know, uh, I mentioned before, uh, RED, 
uh, dedicated enhanced dashboards. It's digitally overlay on a dashboard so that we can bring animation to advertising within game while game is ap actually happening with special offers. It's more powerful. It can be changed out very quickly within a day. Uh, it's really going to lead to possibilities that haven't been available to the sport up to this point. And this, just to clarify, this is something that the TV viewers will see, but not those who are watching at the arena. That's correct. The fans at at, uh, at the arenas will see exactly the physical, um, what they've seen in the past, but the fans watching the broadcast in different parts of the, of the country or the world will see something quite different. So the takeaway is, this is an example. Um, Chevy is a, a partner of ours. Um, and this is one of the images that you might see on Friday where the full ice is taken over on the shot there and they'll have messaging, QR codes, offers, animation, all kinds of different messaging. Um, it's, it's really, it's more flexible, it's bigger, it's more powerful. It really cuts through and, and gets to the point. I think fans, when they see this this weekend are gonna say, what is going on? I'm pretty sure there's been a lot of research done on this and it's 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 pretty uh, pretty pretty powerful. Um, and we think there'll be some ownable moments as well. And this also offers the ability of our uh, partners to advertise um, not only in in our market here, but when the team is on the road, and we'll show that in a minute, and also in the visiting team's markets. There's a lot of flexibility here. And none of this would be possible without the technology. Uh, it's just it's just different, and we couldn't have done this a year ago. Next slide, please. So this is just some stats. Everyone likes stats in the marketing business. It's bigger. Um, it's 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 we can do full ice takeover. It's another thing I want to talk about. You'll see uh, the way we'll we'll offer this product. It will be full ice takeover. So one one partner, one ad, one advertiser. On, on all of the different shots during the, during the gameplay for 30 second intervals. I think we got some images of what it looks like here. So on the left there is, is what it looked like before. And on the right is what you'll start to see uh, with the beginning of the season. And um, the focus groups have been really powerful. The takeaway has been really, really positive um, by the fan and also uh, by the things that they remember about um, the messaging. And I think we got some more shots kind of illustrating. Yeah, so this is an example <clears throat> when um, teams are on the road and fans are watching. Uh, they In the past, they would see advertisers from the away venue uh, on, the, on, on the road away venue. And here they'll see our advertisers, the messaging that we want to promote uh, for our partners and uh, really can lead into campaigns and be really cohesive. And I think the next slide, this is an example when we have a visiting team uh, visiting here at LCA in Detroit, and we have a partner that would want to try to reach, in this case, um, people in Philadelphia, in the Philadelphia market. We, we have the ability and we have inventory now where we can offer that to our partner where they can, they can send messaging and, and, and connect with fans in specific targeted markets, which is, again, something that we just could never do before that's now available to us. This is a shot of what it looks like at center ice. This would be 360 takeover. So as the puck moves from right to left in the shot for every 30 seconds, it'll be one, one partner, one message. So that's just kind of one example. Um, you know, I think that as time goes on, sport and, and the technology is getting so good, digital technology that is, that this will evolve into a lot of other, other possibilities for other sports to offer more platforms to really get specific and tight on, on connecting with, with fans. So you had mentioned that the NHL developed this, but I know that not every team has decided to use it. So can you talk a little bit about why the Red Wings did decide to use it? Like what you see, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious what you see as the benefits, but why was this kind of such a tough hurdle for some of the other teams? Yeah, so um, the, the NHL started working on this about six years ago. They they tested it um, in the in the in the in the minor leagues as well. Uh, really brought it to life uh, last year in um, Las Vegas at the All Star Game. Um, so they the NHL NHL directed we're doing this. They invested all the money to do it. 
Some of the teams have embraced it better than others. All teams are doing it, however. Okay. All okay. teams are doing it. Some teams are doing it, using it reluctantly. Um, and then there are others. The Red Wings are very special. Yeah, That's very special with the Red Wings. Very special. Yes. Um, but we, we jumped on this because we saw it very early as we've needed something like this. We've had partners asking us for this. And uh, we, we saw the benefits early on. And we've been really out in front of it and um, done a lot of great work with it already. And we're really excited on what it could lead to. So we were talking the other day about how media buying in general can be kind of stuck in its ways. Um, what are your thoughts and suggestions for those who are kind of hesitant to step away from, you know, this is the way we've always done things. We've always spent our money in this way. I'm not really open to trying something new. Yeah, I mean, you know, I my advice would be never get settled. You should always be looking um, fans and people are always gathering information and being um, persuaded in, in, in different ways. And I think that the data, the data says that. I think that um, as time goes on, you know, people love live entertainment, live sports, and people are gonna, I think, continue to gravitate there. And anything that we can put within the game that's not disruptive, but it's part of the game, I think it's going to be very, very valuable in time. You know, so we talk a lot about hockey. Let's talk about baseball for a second. Baseball is 2x the size of hockey in terms of revenue, in terms of fans, in terms of what it means as a, as a business size. The amount of hours that baseball is, is uh, televised, there's nothing like it. Um, so content-wise, this, this sort of thing is coming to baseball as well. And we're really excited about that possibility. And we think that, that there's the, the things that we can do there, is, the list is very, very long. So we, we think that there's more coming here. We're really pumped to be part of all of it. And how has the response been from your advertisers? Yeah, so we, in this case, we have uh, 22 Dasher board partners um, that uh, we, we had to engage with and wanted to engage with and talk a little bit about you know, what this was going to mean. And every single one of them were really excited about it. We quickly understood the, the benefits of it. And we've been very active in offering um, this uh, to uh, partners for the away markets as well, that maybe weren't partners before that now now can be. And uh, it's been really um, exciting to see the demand for it. So we think it's, we think that it's going to grow in terms of popularity, um, because it's, it's so different. Um, so what is, I mean, Clearly, you guys are kind of on the cutting edge and doing new and exciting things. What's your advice to some of the younger marketers in the audience who might be dealing with bosses or decision makers who are kind of part of that old school, like that, that's not how we do things, like just stick to the newspaper buy or the traditional TV buy. We don't want to mess with something new. So for those of you that have a boss out there that's difficult, just tell them they're wrong. No, just kidding. Um, you know, I think you gotta take some risks. I think that um, I think you gotta I think you gotta be willing to try some different things. Um, I think you're gonna probably make some mistakes. I think that's pretty normal. Um, but you know, the way people are listening, the way people are observing, the way people are buying today is different than what was happening four years ago, ten years ago, and beyond. So you've got to be willing to get into these different areas and take some risks and take some chances. Because you're gonna hit, you're gonna hit on some of these. Some of these are gonna be big, and they're gonna be really, and you're, you're gonna be better off for being out in front of it, and, uh, and take advantage of it. And I have to imagine that there's better data associated with this as well. I mean, especially with the QR codes, and I mean, you have to have such a larger pool of metrics available to the advertisers versus just a static ad that's sitting there. Yeah, we don't really get in many big conversations anymore where we're not asked to validate with measurable data, um, you know, engagement, how many people are, are reacting to what we're talking about. And the further we go, every time we look at a new platform, a, a new technology, um, we're, we're going to be looking to bring that forward. And digital offers that to us. So it's an opportunity for us to really highlight that and validate and help help our, our partners who have to answer to somebody and, and demonstrate that what they're doing, what they're investing in, what they're believing in actually resonates and matters. We, we've got to be able to provide them with the tools. We know that, 
and these these uh, platforms really help us with that. Awesome. I think we have some time to open it up for questions unless there's anything I accidentally left out. I don't think you left anything out. You okay. did a great job. I feel like I'm doing a lot of talking here. That's your job. That's your job. Were there any questions in the audience for Chris? I got a question. Who's coming to who's coming to the uh, game on next Friday night? Anybody? Opening night? Great. Oh yeah. Okay, great. Looking forward to uh, to season. Who's been to a concert? at LCA or Comerica Park. Yeah. Yeah, concert tonight, right? Lizzo, Lizzo, yeah, Lizzo. We had, who knows how many concerts we had at Comerica Park this year? Record, we had five concerts this year at Comerica Park. They, I guess we sold a bunch of beer too. A lot of beer, a lot of beer at the concerts this year. Casey, we get accused uh, once in a while of, of do we understand who writes our paychecks uh, internally? Um, yeah, right. Yeah, I think I remember that, Casey. Thanks. <laughs> um, you know, we're in the middle. We're in the middle. We Our job is to push the envelope um, everywhere we can. Otherwise, we're not doing our job. I mean, partners want to be close and, and really relevant. And we got to give them the opportunity to do that during the pandemic. <coughs> excuse me. I'll never forget it. You know, we're sitting around like, geez, they're not going to be any baseball games this year. Or if there's baseball games, they're not going to be any fans. What the heck are we going to do? And our staff was like, yeah, well, you know, we got to figure out a way to, to get, to, to get connected to the consumer. If no fans are there, we're going to need some different stuff. And I don't forget we went to, we went to major league baseball and the, the person there, the great guy that does what I do, but for the league, basically said, great ideas, really crazy, never going to happen. Well, we didn't like that answer. So we partnered with a dozen other teams and said, let's create a task force and figure out how to put um, a partner on the mound, how to put a partner um, behind home plate virtually. How do we put a partner on first and third base? How do we do these things? And we ran the course of that and pushed really hard and maybe walked the line a little tight on a couple of occasions. But we finally, we got to the right to the right people and the owners voted for these assets to be turned on. And here, here you have it today and all these assets that I just mentioned are part of the game. So it's it's really, you know, you never get to be 100% right because it feels like well, what we do, we represent our partners, we represent our, our, our owners that own the teams, and we represent the league. And we got we to gotta function in the middle, and we got to figure that out so that we can come up with the best solution, best answer for everybody that we serve. Yeah, so we looked at that and had to figure that out. So all of those partners will be part of DED. So now the asset, when you when you become a dashboard partner, for say, the asset is the physical in the building, and also you have a presence now in the broadcast. And we did a lot of work, um, a lot of analytics. We have a great analytic analytics team in our in our department that values all the work that we're doing and the outputs and so on to back into how many minutes does that need to be to deliver value deliver that value or uh, or in most cases more all cases more actually uh so we 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 they're combined now they're covered i think there's another question on this side oh did you <laughs> it's a good question yeah i i think at this point to rule something like that out is kind of crazy i think anything's possible um i mean the more data that that we get on all of us or we can really target it's it's pretty crazy to think about what what we're going to be able to do you know in, in the future it's uh it's 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 amazing because some of the things we're talking about today were really weren't even even contemplated four or five four or five years ago so it's um it's very exciting you know one thing i haven't really talked about that that i i should <clears throat> i walked woodward from lca to, to hear uh, today uh, for this afternoon. 
the construction that Rocket is doing, um, the build, the new building, the Hudson site, uh, incredible. You're going to hear about several new announcements. The Illich family and uh, related company, which is owned by Stephen Ross and the University of Michigan, announced last December that they're building a new building, a new school, the University of Michigan, a new school, uh, the Detroit Center for Innovation, which is going to be an incubator, a postgraduate school for technology to create, and it'll have a campus to it. And it's going to be right behind the Fox Theater. It'll kind of connect that that corridor. And then there's also stuff in the papers and how <clears throat> we're building a hotel breaking ground next summer um, next to LCA. And then there's more coming. The, but what's interesting is, is we are right now looking at all kinds of technology, digital technology, that's going to be allow, allow us to bring your brands, your companies, your messaging to consumers that are going to be walking those streets, living there, going to school, working, and so on connected to those buildings and it's in some of the stuff we're looking at today is like wow that's really weird and that's really cool and i can only imagine what it's what it's going to look like year after year as things get sharper and better the possibilities what can happen you will not recognize this place 10 years from now and and it's going to be really exciting to see all those things come to light as well it'll make what we're talking about today with digital dashboards which is really cool look like pretty rudimentary with what's the possibilities are in the future when we talk about spaces like that. 